Hello. I am so happy that I am happy and that I am mentally wonderful right now. However, physically, I am falling apart. I am a hot mess. Like, let's see if you can see my, oh, look at that. Look at that. My eye is swollen. That one is not. I think it's infected. Ugh, I'm going to the optometrist tomorrow, so hopefully it's nothing too serious. But that's just one of the things afflicting me. My shoulder is also swollen and acting up. My ankle is also, no, is that, no, no my heel. <laughs> Not my ankle. My heel is also painful. And I have a cold. So to recap, fucked up eye, fucked up shoulder, fucked up heel, and fucked up everything. Even though mentally I'm A-OK, -okay, it's really fascinating how the body manifests toxicity and manifests stress. A lot of people know I had a really stressful, awful, shitty ass weekend and it manifested itself in my body. <sighs> Fuck! At least I spiritually am happy. I'm happy. I'm happy even though I'm down and falling apart. And also everything that's going on in our country and the world is affecting me. I think it affects all of us. It really affects me though. I'm a really, truly sensitive person. It's difficult for me to watch and read the news and see and hear all of the vile and shameful things happening and that Donald Trump is saying and doing or not saying I mean, today, he was blaming the fake news media again after, hello, he gave one of possibly the worst press conference of his entire presidency, and there have been a lot. He was in Trump Tower, and there's video of him blaming both sides and just being so tone deaf, so insensitive, and so horrendous. The fake news media is not to blame. You are to blame. Donald Trump is a racist. Hillary warned us. I mean, even today, Donald Trump took to Twitter to bemoan taking down statues of slave owners and uh, Confederate soldiers. In Germany, they have statues like that of Nazis in museums. Those statues don't belong in public parks. They belong in museums where they should be studied and learned from, like he said. But keeping them up in public, that's going to enable and that's what the white supremacists want. Okay? As simple as that. Donald Trump says and does things that white supremacists, racists like, want. Make America great again? That's their new fucking slogan. <sighs> but you know what? We cannot get complacent. We can't accept his awfulness as the new normal. We must continue to feel rage. We must continue to speak out. And I will continue to do that and gleefully troll him on Twitter. He's got me blocked on Instagram, but he doesn't have me blocked on Twitter. And I will continue to respond in my colorful ways to every one of his atrocious tweets. Let me stop talking about him because I've had enough. On to other news. I don't know if you guys have heard it or not yet. Up on my website, I have audio of this interview that Fifth Harmony gave to the Sun newspaper in the UK. The Sun is the largest newspaper in the UK, read by millions of people, 
every day, both in print and online. And they were getting asked questions they did not want to answer. They were being asked about Camila, Camila Cabello. You see, I can pronounce her name right every time I say it the American way. People get so upset. I'm Cuban. Spanish is my first language. I know how to say her fucking name. Just when I say my real name in English, I say Mario. I don't say Mario. Okay? So Fifth Harmony was being asked a lot of questions about Camila Cabello. And they were not having it. They did not handle that situation as well as they could have, which is surprising because they've been around five years now and I would have thought they were a little more seasoned than that. You know, in instances of tough questions, I think what's best is just to answer them. The more you don't want to or avoid it, the worse you look, I think. Um... And, the, and, and you turn it into a story by not answering it. You know, you've already talked about Camila. If somebody asks about it, just give a quick answer. By not answering it, you're making it a bigger deal. If you want to listen to that, it's quite um, hilarious. I got it up on my site. Also, Katy Perry announced this morning that she is delaying the start of her Witness tour by about two weeks, citing unforeseen production delays. I don't know if I believe her, but I'll take her at her word. What is a fact, though, is unfortunately, there are tickets for Katie's tour being sold on StubHub for less than face value. That means people can't get rid of their tickets. People that bought them that are scalpers or that were hoping to make a profit off them, regular people, are unable to sell those tickets, so they are selling them at a loss. That's not a good sign for the tour. In more music-related news, Justin Bieber has released his new single, Friends, which he's not giving away for free, which I think he should have, as a thank you to his fans for canceling his tour. Uh, and it's a fine song. It's pleasant, pleasantly average. Nothing special about it. I don't quite understand the need or the reasoning behind releasing it. Why? And finally, let me end things on some positive news. Two happy bits of info. Congratulations to Robin Thicke. He and his girlfriend, April Love Geary, are expecting their child together. And also, congratulations. <coughs> oh, I feel so shitty. Congratulations to Emma Stone. She has topped Forbes' list of highest paid actresses. It wasn't Scarlett Johansson or Jennifer Lawrence. That is surprising to me. She has made $27 million this past year. And to read the entire list of highest paid actresses, if you haven't seen it yet, you can check it out on PerezHilton.com. And that's that. I love being live. I love talking to you guys. And thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit like. Hit share. Have a great day.